entrepreneurs. We are always striving to help people understand the real complexities of going into the criminal justice system. And today, we get to talk to an individual who is just about ready to go into the system. And he's there with his wife, who's half on camera. <laughs> but we're, I, <laughs> hello, um, I am Michael Santos, and I just really want to help families understand that there's a pathway through. So, so Ryan, I'll just use your first name, Ryan. Why don't you tell me what what concerns you have, and let's just have a conversation that would help anybody who's going through this challenging time. It sounds good. Um, at this point, you know, I've I've been on several of the webinars, I've gone through several of the blogs, and I've done quite a bit of the reading, and I feel like that's gotten me pretty far. But now I just feel like it's some basic logistics issues of things that I feel like I should have answers to that I just don't exactly know. Like, um, you know, tomorrow, what documents should I be bringing with me? And, you know, I, I have I have a bunch of documents ready, but I don't know, you know, what, you know, should I be mailing those? Will a case manager be taking them? You know, let me let me walk you through what's going to happen tomorrow so that you're not you're not traumatized and you're not just sometimes you know the the great fear is the fear of the unknown and if you kind of go in there expecting what's going to happen you feel better so here's and and I I've been in that situation where I'm surrendering to prison and um not initially, but going from one prison to another, I've had to go through that process. And so I'm really used to it. And, 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 and to some, in some ways, I became immune to the whole process. But you're going there for the first time. And the first thing I want you to understand is where you're going. So I know you're going to Thompson, which is uh, really a super high security prison, but it has an adjacent minimum security camp. So if you start from that premise that, okay, I know where I'm going, that means you also know some of the, some of the challenges that the staff has. They're, they're really focused on the, the, the prison, the, the hardcore prisoners, what are called high security. And typically the people in Thompson Penitentiary are going to be people that had challenges in other penitentiaries. They were engaged in violent behavior or gang activity or something like that someplace else. So it's going to be, I want you to be thinking, this is going to be a very secure prison, but you're never going to mix with those people. So take that out of your head. That said, you're going to interact with staff members who interact with those people every day. And so they may be a little bit hard when you come there. There may not be a lot of welcoming and, 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 and warm embrace. You're surrendering to a prison, but just keep in your head, I am going to the minimum security camp. Remember that regardless of how they talk to you when you get there, okay? So when you get there, they are going to allow you to say, is your wife driving you? Uh, no, my brother is. My wife's going to be staying home with my kids. Okay, so your brother's going to drop you off. You're going to surrender. Most likely, they're going to make you go surrender to the main prison because that's where the processing takes place. Mm -hmm. And so when you go in there, they're going to ask you for some identifying material. I, if I were you, I would take your driver's license because they're going to take your driver's license and put it into your central file. And that's important for you in the event that you get released to or they release you to transition to home confinement early, you may have to take a bus home or something like that. I don't know how far away you are from the prison, but they're going to want to give you um, identification. And so if you take your driver's license, they're just going to put it in your central file. Okay. okay? So you're, they're not going to lose it. Another thing to take would be your social security card. If you have it, take both of your driver's license or your social security card. Um, and that's really all you need to take with you when you surrender. The less you bring with you, the better off you're going to be, okay? okay. Because they're not used to taking stuff and they don't want to process a lot. Do you have any medical complications or anything like that? No, nothing that I'm bringing specific paperwork for. Okay, then don't worry about that. Just bring your driver's license and your social security card so they can identify you when you surrender. Ask them to keep it with your central file so they can give it back to you the day you walk out, okay? okay. And I wouldn't bring anything else. If you don't need to bring anything else, don't bring anything else. What you're going to want to do, do you owe a fine? 
Uh, no, my restitution is paid in full, but I'm glad you asked that. Um, so the restitution is paid in full, but I have still not received back the final paperwork saying that it is paid That's in okay. full. Um, so I don't know if the BOP has gotten that yet, that it's paid in full. So the only thing I have is documentation of that there is an agreement that it's to be paid and we're still waiting for them to update my PSR. Okay. Um, did you pay it at sentencing or how did you pay? Did you give it to your attorney? How did you pay it? So there was, there was two fines. One I paid pre-sentencing. The other one um, had to be worked out and my attorney just released those funds about two and a half weeks ago. So what I would do is I would write an email to your attorney right now and ask him to send verification to your wife by email that he has uh, paid the fine in full. Um, I would also, when you go there, you're going to be you're going to be fine because it's not going to come up tomorrow. It'll come, and within 30 days, you will have what's called the unit team meeting with your case manager, and you'll let them know that you have paid the fine in full. Um, but just to be, you know, was, as President Reagan once said, you know, um, uh, proof with verification. Get your verification so that your wife has it, and that way she could send it to you right away, and you know. You know, you might also ask your attorney to send it, put it in the mail to you today, and that way you'll get it tomorrow or, the, or in a few days when you're there, um, just so that you have the verification. The good thing about knowing that you've paid your fine is now they're not going to bother you with regard to how much, um, how much you can have in your commissary account. So if, you're gonna, if your sentence is eight months, and you have the ability, your family has the ability, it's going to be easiest for you just to send the money that you're going to need to spend. So it's just, it, it's like in a bank account that you could draw upon every time you go to the store. It's just easier if it's already there. The only people that can do that is, who, are people who don't have a fine because, or have satisfied, because otherwise, the, the, otherwise they're going to really press upon you to pay more towards your fine or restitution. But since you don't have that, if you have the ability, and I would ask your family to try and you know send you for eight months. If you if you sent you know five grand, that's probably enough to cover you for the entire time you're there. Hopefully, you're only going to be there for a couple of months. But what'll happen is they'll just give you the money back the day you you leave. They'll give it to you in cash or a check. Um, and and so I just found that to be easy because it's going to be somewhat stressful. People get busy out here and. You know, you need money in there to go to the store when you're allowed to shop, and you never know when that's going to be. So it's just easier if you have the money in your account already. Now, for somebody who's got a fine or restitution, that's a whole different um, set of a whole different conversation that I would be giving them. But since you don't have one, I would just and you have the ability, I'd put the money in your account so you could use it whenever you want. Okay, sounds good. And do you know how to put money in your account? Uh, we just went through that. The MoneyGram stuff, it all had directions on it. I'm just waiting for him to have his intake so we have his number. Yeah. So that's, uh, there. I have a video that, that actually has charts on it and it shows the the information, how to do it. I'll, I'll share it with you and I'll send it to you if you don't have it to make, because it's somewhat complicated to get into the Western Union. And that's one thing that I would recommend you do is tomorrow, as soon as you are, if your brother's going to drop you off, what, around 9, 10 o'clock tomorrow? Uh, probably about 11 o'clock. Yeah, 11 o'clock. Well, then I would have your family look at the, um, go to the Western Union and send you, uh, I think the maximum they can send at one time is $300. Have them go to Western Union and send you $300 tomorrow by like, um, by like one, one or two or four o'clock in the afternoon because there's a possibility you get on the compound tomorrow and there's a shopping day for you tomorrow. And if there is, you want to have money in your account so that you could buy toothpaste and, and uh, sweatpants or something like that tomorrow. Um, I don't know if there's shopping tomorrow, but I know if you don't have any money, you couldn't do it anyway. So Western Union makes, you could send the first $300 and it'll be in your account within 10 minutes. And then they could send the remainder to the Dropbox at, in Iowa. And I will provide instructions on how to do that. So after we have this, e this call, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to do it and, and send it to you that way. Okay. 
Um, what what's your thoughts on? So I have I have two wedding rings. My original wedding ring, and then as I got a little bit bigger, my current <laughs> wedding ring, <laughs> the fat ring. <laughs> so I would like to have it with, but should can I they, see it? Can you can you show it to me on the uh, on the? Just put your hand up. Yeah, you know, actually, I don't have it on at the moment. If you give me thirty seconds, oh, no, it's okay. Is it like this? Is it just a band, or is it? Does it have stones in it? There's no, there's no stones in it. Um, it's. So is it just I mean, a a gold band or a metal band? It's a metal band. It's silver and black. It's okay. That's fine. As long as it's a metal band and it doesn't have any stones, you're okay, and you could de- you should wear it. Um, they're going to ask you, is it valued at $100 or less? I mean, that's been the policy for 50 years, so they've never <laughs> increased it. So you just say yes. I mean, nobody's going to take your ring off of your finger and it's not, is, you know, it's not, it's fine. The only, they don't let uh, wedding rings in there with stones, but they do let you have your wedding ring on. Okay. Um, and then as far as, you know, I, so I've been working on my release plan and gathering all those documents. Um, is that something I have Karen mail into me at a certain point and present to the unit man or the case manager, I guess is the person. Yeah. What I would do is tomorrow I would ask Karen to put that into an envelope. How many pages is it? Uh, yeah, it's nowhere near the length of yours. So it's, um, I think it's, uh, three pages, but then it has probably like another, seven or eight pages worth of attachments, you know, like driver's license, insurance cards, resume, all that. Here's my recommendation. Bring it with you. Do you is there any color on it? Um, I think maybe the driver's license has color on it. And I think everything but you else could is print it in black and white, right? Yeah. Print it in black and white with no color. And my recommendation is that you bring it with you, okay? And when they ask you, what's this? Say, I, I read that a release plan is important and I wanted to give it to my unit team. Okay. okay. And, and see if they, either they're going to take it or they're going to throw it away, but it costs you nothing to bring it with you. So bring it with you. But also tomorrow have uh, Karen, is that her name? Yep. So, yep. Put it in the mail and send it to you tomorrow and you'll <laughs> get it in a couple of days. Now, Karen, I, I would recommend, is it, is it all printed on one side or two sides? It's on one side. So great. Send, and if it's eight pages, I would send it in in two envelopes. So send the three pages. It's just the, the part and then the attachment separately um, because you're not going to believe this, but there are some really weird policies in prisons and you're going to a high security prison. So they may have a policy that said, we won't accept more than four pages. You know, sometimes that's the way they won't accept more than four pages. Um, some of them say we don't accept colored paper, any kind of colored paper. Um, yeah. We don't accept paper on printed on both sides. So I would just err on the side of caution that it's going to be one of those kind of weird prisons just because it's high security. The main one, not where you are, but remember, nothing's going to happen at the camp, right? The, all the processing takes place in the big penitentiary. That's where they have a lot of staff. I wouldn't be surprised if when you're in the camp, there's no more than two or three staff members there for everybody in the, in the prison. There's very few. So, so they're going to, the rules, a lot of it is going to be governed by inside. And although they, they theoretically say we treat the camp male differently, I, I would just take it that way. Cause my goal for you is to be very invisible while you're there and to be able to make a case that says I'm a good candidate to be released at the soonest possible time. And today, with today's rules, that soonest possible time is probably in three months in all reality. I mean, they say 25%, which would be two months, but I don't think the Bureau of Prisons moves that fast. So I would right. say the best possible thing is for them to transition you to ho- let you know, we're going to transition you to home confinement in 90 days. Um, and, you know, we're going to learn about that at your first team meeting, what they're going to recommend. Um, if they didn't recommend you for that in 90 days, then I, I, I think that you you know to add us to your core links account. You'll connect with us and we will provide you with some um, guidance that you could use to try and prompt them to let them know why you're a good candidate. But we want you to to to, to really help yourself along those ways. And so when you get there tomorrow, 
my thoughts are, or, or not tomorrow, but when you meet with the unit team for the first time, which is going to be within the next 30 days, you're going to want to say, you know, as I've said on the webinar, I prepared a release plan because I know it's really important. I wanted you to have it. I'm going to continue keeping a journal while I'm here and, and, and working through this process. And um, I, I'd like you just to consider me to transition to home confinement um, based on the CARES Act but uh, of, uh, as soon as I can. And, and just kind of play it, you know, just always be respectful and, you know, we'll see what they respond. And then based on what you tell us how they respond, we'll give you some other ideas to advance, what, what other um, mechanisms exist for you to advance the ball. Okay. Yeah. And I did uh, provide Carol with my CARES Act paperwork. So she has that as well. Uh, yeah. So, right. she'll, so, so that you want, you don't like, don't even bring it up tomorrow. Don't bring it up until you get to the team and then kind of, you know, listen and see what they're saying. And also talk to the people in the camp because remember, they have the right to send you home. You don't have the right to say, send me home. They, they can do it. They've got the discretion to do it. Um, but listen to what's going on in the camp and, and just hear how are they, because you, tomorrow you're going to make some friends tomorrow. Okay, there'll be somebody who's going to welcome you and 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 walk you around and 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 just you know kind of under, see learn what's going on there, um and 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 we'll go from there. And okay, so so, so let me see if there's more questions, and I'll have some other questions for you. <laughs> sure. Can, can I ask a question? You can ask anything you want. So to send money, to send anything, mail, um, should I wait until I have that number assigned to Ryan? So that it yeah. to him correct. When you you have you visited the website bop.gov? Yes, we've been all over that, and they don't have a number for him yet. I assume it goes into the system when he does. They don't have a registration number. We've, we gone, we've gone to the inmate search, and we haven't seen it. Mm -mm. Let, let me let me look right now. I'm gonna yeah, go when here. And stuff. I'm like, I would love to, except he doesn't have a number yet. He should have a number. Let me look here. Hold on a second. You can't send it anyway until he's there. Right. He won't right. show up in the in the. How do you spell your last name? W e c k e r l y. Okay. Let me search. Okay. Wait a minute. You do have a number. I'm going to share my screen with you. Oh. Okay. So let me show you where to go. Your entire screen. I'm going to share my screen. And so you would go to the BOP.gov and there's your name, Ryan Rockley. There's your number. It's 73051-509. Okay. Right now it says not in BOP custody. By tomorrow afternoon, it will say where he is. And then in a couple of weeks, it'll have a release date there. Okay. So this is where you want to go to get the number. Mm -hmm. All right. But until it says he's not processed in, right. when he gets processed in, that will be filled out. That must have all just gotten updated because last time we looked, it wasn't there. So that's okay. Things are, things are happening. Okay. <laughs> so that's the number. And, and that's where, and when you want to send the resources in there, I'm going to share another screen with you. It's right here. And if I go to this section right here under after sentencing, I think it's after sentencing. It might be advocacy, but let me just scroll down here. Send money. If you click on this link right here, it's ro mm -hmm. row number 13. Because it's kind of confusing. But if we you went, scroll yeah. down. I went, I went through that and I saw there were two options. Yeah. Money. One, is, one is Western mm -hmm. Union. One is the, but use the Western Union for tomorrow because it's super fast. Okay. That's what, that's what I was wondering. Okay. Yeah. And then it just shows you here what, what you put in and, and where you put it in, okay. you know, how you do it. Cause it's confusing when you go to the website for the first time. Okay. All right. But there's a maximum of $300. Mm -hmm. So you might send $300 tomorrow there and then send the rest of it here. Because this is where they process money in Iowa. And just mail a check or whatever. You could, you could just mail a check or I, it's probably better to send a postal money order. Okay. Because that's, it's U.S. government to U.S. government. Okay. Because and we're that's, got it. That's fast. Okay. 
Um, but if you don't have this link, let me drop it in the chat so of this website so that you will have it. Let me find the chat section um, right here. So I'm dropping it in the chat. Um, and then you can click that and then you'll, they'll have it. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, but, um, more questions. I'm here to help. Yeah. Um, so as far as a contact list, is that another thing that I mail myself or is that something I can, I would bring it with you and mail it to yourself both. Okay. Okay. Because if you, if you, if they allow you to bring it in, it just saves you a lot of frustration. I would also just drop one in the mail today. Yeah. Because it's not going to get there today. It'll be, but it'll be there tomorrow. You'll, yeah, you'll, you'll now, pass that, yeah, now that we have the number, because that was not showing up the last time we looked. So we do you have the know. mailing address? Yes, I think so. Let yeah. me make sure that you're using the right mailing address, and I'm going to show you how. Um, your entire screen. So I'm sharing my screen again. I'm going to go back to BOP. Oh, that's not BOP. I'm going to go to BOP.gov right here. And I'm going to go up here to locations, list of our facilities. And I'm going to go to Thompson down. I'm going to meet you there, by the way. I know I'm going to Thompson before you come home. Oh, so, when, when are you doing that? I don't have the date. I'm going to quite a few in Indiana in November. But I imagine December. It's, a lot of it depends on the BOP, on the government's budget. But anyway, scroll down here. This is the prison. Scroll down here. How many people are there, by the way? High security penitentiary with an adjacent minimum security camp. So there's only 100 people in the camp. Um, make sure you don't send the mail here. Okay, Karen? Do you see that section right there at the top? Mm -hmm. Don't Do not send it there. Scroll down, and you can, you want to say there's inmate mail? No, there's a PO box, right? Yep, it's satellite camp. It's not. It's the same, but just use use this use this as your as your section there for how to send it. Okay. Yes, I do have that. Okay, I'm going to drop it in the chat too, just to be sure. And then I'll go back to the meet and stop sharing and drop it in the chat. And now you've got make a note of that. Um. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> I would send that in the mail to yourself today. Send all that stuff in the mail to yourself today because then it'll be there tomorrow or the next day. Okay. Um, yeah, as far as like the clothes that I wear that day. Be they, prepared to throw them away. Okay. <laughs> so I just wear either crappy old shoes or crappy whatever. Yeah, exactly, because they're not going to allow you to take it in there. And, um, and then when you're ready to come home, your, your wife can send you some clothes or bring you to send, they'll allow you to send clothes before you come home. If you want to, you know, have clothes to pick up, but you could, uh, I could tell you, I, I think, yeah, I didn't, my wife didn't send me clothes. I just wore, cause you can buy sweatpants there and a sweatshirt and just wear that out. And then she, you know, change when, yeah. And then she had clothes in the car for me. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. And as far as that, I know on that first commissary trip, not to buy everything, <laughs> at once well it depends because um you're gonna get validated you know yeah i would i would look and see get what you need but you are gonna need a lot in the first time you're gonna need shoes you're gonna need clothes you know you're i mean you're gonna want to buy a sweatshirt and a pair of sweatpants and a pair of shoes sometimes you have to order the shoes so it takes a week to get them so you buy it and then you order it um but and then you're going to want to buy toothpaste and toothbrush and things of that sort. So, but you're going to get validated again. And actually, you're kind of lucky because the next they, they on November and December they increase the spending limit for for Christmas. So um, you'll have a higher spending limit in November and December anyway. Make sure you spend all that because it, it only lasts for two months. And you're say, oh, because they'll have extra stuff and you want to buy everything you can before you run out. <laughs> the, the spending limit doesn't carry over. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I, I was definitely thinking shoes, some workout clothes, and then some toiletries and Advil. And, uh, yeah, uh, and, and you're going to find people that will help you as well. Okay, They're, they will guide. There's, there's a lot of people that help. Okay. They've all been just like where you are. And so there'll be plenty of people that are glad to see a business guy come in and, you know, you'll be well received. Okay. The, as far as getting a, a message out to Karen, 
So yeah. I, so the way to do that, hopefully you get access to um, the email and the phone right away. Unfortunately, you know, the BOP has got a staffing problem and it could be a few days, but you will find somebody what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to say um, to a friend, could you do a favor and have your wife call my wife? And, and that's all. Don't, you, you, they'll know not to do a three-way call because that's against the rules, but they, they're fine for them to say, like, if, if I met you, I said, would you like my wife to call your wife and just let her know you're okay? And, it'll be, and that just will relieve a lot of stress on your wife. Um, that's just the easiest way to do it. Okay. Just, that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so answer the phone tomorrow when you see the strange number coming. I know I'm going to have a lot of car warranty calls that come through. <laughs> my wife, <laughs> my wife doesn't. Through. My wife doesn't answer any phone calls that she doesn't recognize because there's so much spam and stuff like that. That's, and that's what's going to be weird for the next month. Is like I'll have to answer every single call. Well, the weird thing is that when you're calling from the BOP, a lot of times the phone number is from a two zero two number, so you'll recognize it. Okay. Okay. Does the, um, where do I find, you had talked about starting to, you know, send your, send your letters to your future probation officer. Oh, so where do I find that. And let me get that information for you. Um, you're in, where do you live? What country, what state? I'm in Illinois. Illinois, Southern district of Illinois or which district? Northern district. So, so it's the same place courthouse where you where you're are you in chicago uh no i'm an i'm an hour a little over an hour west of chicago but all of my stuff was done up in wisconsin so i was at i was up in i was tried in a federal court in madison so you're tried in madison but do you know if you've already have a release jurisdiction in in illinois yes okay so we have to find the address for the department of is it the DOJ? Yeah. Uh, no, it's the court. I'll find it for you and I'll send it to Karen. Karen, could you, you should have my contact information, you know, just in case you have any questions or anything like that. Um, if you shoot me an email, I'll respond to both of you. Um, okay. But actually, I could find it right now while you guys are on the thing if you want me to do it and I'll drop it in the chat. Let me just show you how I would do it. Your entire screen here. Um, am I sharing? My screen? Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. So I'm going to go to um, federal court. And is that what, what district in Illinois would you be? This, the Northern District of Illinois? Yes. Northern District of Illinois. Uh, Northern District of Illinois, U.S. District Court. So now I can go to U.S. Probation. U.S. Probation. United States for Northern District of Illinois. There it is right there. So it's going to be the same address right here as the U.S. District Court. And this is what I did. I just had my wife come here. Oh, shoot. It didn't say. General information. Chicago office. Is that, is it, would it be Chicago office, Lizelle office, or Rockford office, do you think? So for all of my pre and post sentencing stuff. I've been dealing with people out of the Chicago office. Originally, they thought it was going to be Rockford, but they mm -hmm. kicked me over to Chicago. Okay. Well, there's the address right here. So I would, that's what I did. I would write to this comp, this group right here. You don't know who your probation officer is going to be, but it doesn't matter. You know, I would just write your probation officer. My name's Ryan. I'm serving in currently serving a sentence at Thompson, but I'm going, I anticipate being released sometime in the next few months. And I just want you to know how hard I've been working and what my release plan is. And I look forward to meeting you when I come home. And, and then if you sent them a quarterly letter or a monthly letter, I think that you advance the ball in, in having them kind of expecting you when you get home. That's what worked for me. Okay. Um, I think that's the majority. Of it. So I, I think the one other thing that I just kind of mainly want to reiterate. So when I meet with the case manager for the first time and I, I word respectfully and carefully about bringing up the CARES Act of about initiating that conversation if he or she does not initiate that. Correct. Well, 
here's what I would do. I would, because you're going to have 30 days. They've, they've got 30 days before they do what's called a unit team with you. Okay. I, and they may do it faster, but I always found that they're kind of slow. So 30 days. During those 30 days, you're going to get a lot of local information from that particular prison. And that's going to give you insight. When you get that information, are you a, are you a comfortable writer? I think you are. You're in the business, right? You're a digital guy. Send me an email, okay? You know where to send emails to us, right? On our, you know our email address? I have all your guys' personal emails, but is there a general one you want me to use? Yeah, they don't. We, we have, oh, so I'm going to drop that in the chat. So you have it. Core links. And send this in the mail to yourself. We'll send it to you in the mail. Core links, core links at... Okay. If you send, when you get your, when you get there, send an email there. And that's our client list. There's another one that's called, that's, that's fine. Just send it there. Cause they get it. If, if they're, if they're on that one, Carol, they get everything right. Okay. So, so send us an email there. Um, and, uh, we may be sending you additional ones because there may be things that you can do while you're there. Are you a reader? Do you like to read? Yes. Do you have a list of books that you want to read when you get there? Yeah, I have a, I prepared a list. Um, I created also an Amazon list Great. of it as well. I, and, and so do you have a list? That, like, have you ordered books today? I've not ordered books today. I think it's a I good would. idea to go to Amazon and order some books today because they won't get there for a couple of days anyway. And you'll really appreciate them when they come. Don't order more than two. Order two today, order two tomorrow, you know, um, order two the next day, you know, or in a couple of days, because you can't get more than five at a time. And you don't want, you don't know when Amazon's going to send them. So I would, I was just always order two or three at a time. Um, and um, I would then, did, did you participate on that webinar where I wrote about writing book reports? Yes. I would do so that, right? If you want to do that, and, and, and that's an activity, like I, I've been recommending this to people because for one thing, it's helpful, you know, um, to pe for other people to say, hey, what, what are you reading that's helping you through the journey? And if you write it and send it to me in a, in a, in, on core links, I'll put it together for you, you know, it, you know, in a book like this that we'll use. It'd be also a great thing for you to do if you got out of prison and you went to your probation officer and you said, well, I really wanted to have a productive time in here. And so I wrote, I was very methodical about what I read and I produced this and then I donated my writing to the nonprofit so that if you do this, I could produce that for you. If you did the writing, I would have our team take it, put it into an Amazon product and sell it for you. And then, and then you'd have something that you didn't just waste your time while you were there, which is great because you, you're, you're, you're always trying to differentiate yourself from other people and that they see. That's what I did to get a higher level of liberty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I also, I also have a website that will also be populating it too as well. So. Oh, well send me the link so I could see it as well. And that's another great place to put what you're doing, track what you're doing. It's very helpful. Yeah. No, the, the your story really hit home about how, uh, you, um, almost got in more trouble by the a, a random phone call that you didn't make. Oh my God. Yeah. That was a funny story. Be ready. There's a lot of that kind of nonsense. I don't think you'll have that issue. I was in a higher security prison when that happened. Minimum security camps are way more lax. Okay. Way so, more lax. <laughs> with, with the, with that unit manager um, or case manager, I'll, I'm sure I'll get these names a little bit better. Okay by the time I'm there. So I will be sharing with them my release plan that day and talking, initiating a CARES Act conversation if they don't bring it up. Yeah, but I will give you some insight on that more on after I hear from you next week. Because you're going to okay. tell me what you're hearing. You're going to hear, it's going to be a lot of talk on the camp. Who's getting it? Are they giving it? If they say they're not getting it, then give me that information because then we could use it perhaps in when we're trying to advocate for you. Okay. Um, because then, because I think if I calculate the dates right, you know, it's, as we know it today, it's 25% of my term, correct? Correct. So it's two months. 
right? It's two months. I mean, you're. Yes. I, his, his sentence is a year and a day. His, oh, I thought it was eight months. Oh, okay. So it's his for, real, his for real sentence that the judge gave him is one year, one day. So yeah, that's so that's then three months is about right. Yeah. And so, so then at, at that point, well, I mean, it is a little bit of wait and see what the the camp is saying. But at that point, that would be when. I would That's be making we would start. Yeah, we don't want to start before then because then they're going to, because what they'll do is if you're before the guideline part, which is in three months, their guidelines say 25%, they'll just reject it. And then you're kind of, you've wasted time because now you got to right. wait before you get to submit again. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. okay. And are you are you clear on what Michael's saying that you kind of want to get the word on the street and then decide how to bring it up? You don't want to necessarily... Yeah, don't, don't, you won't. They won't. You won't even meet with them. You'll meet with them tomorrow, but it'll be a very perfunctory meeting. You certainly don't want to bring it up tomorrow. Just, right. I want you to just be invisible, and if there are courses, take courses. Give us an update on what's going on. You know, I I think that that's important to share with the, you know, with the world. That's what I try to do. You know, so it's yeah. very important to. to to unmask some of the unknown of what's going on, not only for people going inside, but also for family members. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. I, I think that's my list of questions too. Well, give her my phone number, Karen, so that if you have a question, you can call me, right? I, my, I'm one of these guys that has my cell phone with me all the time. You see it. If, I, if it's ringing, I give it to my wife. Will you answer the phone? All the time. So I try to be really responsive and I'll, I'll do the best that I can to help you while you're in there too. What are you going to do when you come home? Um, I think that's kind of the great question, you know, uh, I'd love to, I'd love to kind of develop that. Cause I mean, I'm very passionate about trying to change the system and help people in prisons learn new skills. And I know you have a great skill that's that, that people could learn and grow from. And, and it, it, it's probably something that you'd be really good at. Yeah. No, I know you and I kind of had that previous conversation about teaching a digital marketing course and creating it. It's actually creating the whole thing and then using that as a as a tool that teaches other people how to change their life, you know. And and I like to get those kinds of courses inside because and then I show them I mean, you're you're going to a camp, which there's going to be a lot of a relatively lot of normal people, business type people, you will see some people that are not that normal. You will see people that are, you know, questionable of whether they can make it outside in a job because they just don't have critical thinking skills. They just don't have an education. And I always try to teach them how, why it's so important to read and write and learn these skills so that you can prepare. And let's just end this on a positive note and have a great trip and uh, <laughs> stay connected with me. And we'll see you in a few months. Thank, Safe thank travels you. tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye.